you want to dive a little deeper into the history of the mill, I really do hope you'll uh, check out this six part series that I produced in partnership with the Baltimore Museum of Industry. It's called Sparrows Point, an American Steel Story. And I'm going to play just a few quick audio clips uh, from it here to give you a sense of what it's all about. Episode one is really designed to kind of get you into the story with a listener immersion experience where you get to hear firsthand from former steel workers what it was like to lace up your boots and go into the blast furnace or the hot strip mill and do a day's work. It was incredible. Just the, the smoke, the heat, the sulfur, the dust, the noise. They put me on the blast furnace the second week I was there and I almost quit. It was like fighting a fire. In the podcast series, we also travel back in time to the origins of Sparrows Point. We trace the growth of, you know, what was destined to become the largest steel mill in the world. And uh, we ask, how did this swampy peninsula on the Patapsco River end up getting picked as the site for a, a revolutionary state-of-the-art steel mill? And, uh, and by the way, what was there first? There was just one house on it, a house of an old ship captain, and Captain Fitzel liked his isolated spot because it reminded him of being out at sea. And they began building around 1888. From the origins of Sparrows Point, we fast forward to the mid 20th century and zoom in on the advent of unions and uh, the issue of race relations at the mill. Obviously, a unionized workforce was not part of the company's original plan. Neither was racial equity, for that matter. The fight for worker rights and for racial justice really was an uphill battle. And it was interesting just to see how they went to the Justice Department and they would lobby to make changes. So it would be two, three buses. And when you filled that room up, you would get people's attentions. And, uh, you know, in the 1970s, Bethlehem Steel was forced by federal consent decree to start hiring women in all operational departments. And uh, at Sparrows Point, uh, this brave generation of female steel workers first walked through the doors. And, and when they did, they stepped into a work environment that was honestly crass. It was sexist and oftentimes openly hostile to their presence. I can remember them hanging out of the cranes and hollering at us. And I say, who ruled this world? Girls, girls, and kept on walking. By the mid 20th century, Bethlehem Steel was the biggest steel company in the U.S. It was an industrial giant that seemed too powerful to fail. But in 2001, it declared bankruptcy, decimating retirees' pensions and health benefits. And we take an episode in the series to dive in and examine how this empire collapsed. And we, we bear witness to the aftermath. The world caught up to us. And we did not change. When I think of Bethlehem Steel, I think about the Roman Empire, and I think how industrial royalty became, well, right now it's dust. In the final episode of the series, we bring things up to the present day, and we ask, what does the story of Sparrows Point have to teach us today? What can the ghost of this now-gone steel mill tell us about an uncertain economic future? When you're successful, you can't get complacent. You have to keep evolving. And if you don't, our free market system says you won't survive. And that is uh, just a quick glimpse at Sparrows Point, an American Steel story. Each episode is about 40 minutes long, and uh, they really go into some nice depth and nuance on all these critical points throughout the history of the mill. Uh, if you're a, a savvy, experienced podcaster, I can tell you, you can find the series on whatever platform you use, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. And uh, if, you're, if you're new to the whole podcast thing, you can also easily find all the episodes at the Baltimore Museum of Industry's website, thebmi.org. Thanks so much and uh, enjoy.